The West State Wildcats were formed in 1982. In 1984, they would be named the Perth Wildcats. Player Mike Ellis was on the original 1982 Wildcats team. He was essential in the evolution of the team. However, they weren't good for a while, missing the playoffs the first five years of existing. In 1987, the Wildcats added some iconic names to the lineup, including James Crawford, Alan Black, Trevor Torrance, and the eight time NBL All Star Cal Bruton. When Cal Bruton arrived as coach, and then he brought James Crawford, Tiny Pender, and a few other players over, and that's when a sort of basketball took off in Perth. This caused immediate results by not only making the Wildcats first finals in their franchise history, but also making the grand final, upsetting the top of the ladder Adelaide 36ers. After this incredible run, they were swept by the Brisbane Bullets. However, this was a huge turnaround from last year, as they came 12th place, one of the worst records in the league that year. This helped give experience to a young team nowhere near its peak. In the next three years, the Perth Wildcats experienced rapid growth. Cal Bruton, who decided to retire and become a full-time coach, recruited the 23-year-old point guard Vicky Grace from the University of Oklahoma. A guy named Cal Bruton invited me to play for the Perth Wildcats. Cal had played for the Wildcats from 1987 to 1989. He was player and coach actually, but he invited me to a tryout in America. I had just finished trying out for the Minnesota Timberwolves in American NBA and um, invited me to Australia and I thought why not. The team started to fit together well, with multiple Hall of Famers reaching a 17-9 record coming in 5th place. It was a slow start, it was a slow fit. Um, my first year we didn't start great and the coach, the original coach that I had my first year uh, got the sack unfortunately because of our slow start so my fit wasn't great in the beginning but then luckily towards the end of our first season we all figured it out and my fit um, we, we figured that out and it was the perfect fit for us to win a championship. Wildcats made it through to the final sweeping the Melbourne Tigers and got their revenge on the North Melbourne Giants 2-1 to one, who won the past two years reaching the finals to verse the Brisbane Bullets. I played at the University of Oklahoma in America. We made it to the championship game, the final game, final four, then championship game, and we lost. So I had never quite won just that ultimate prize of any season. In a free game series, the Wildcats beat the Bullets. It was the first team in Western Australia to win a national championship. Um, the Wildcats won in 1990-91. The Eagles won in 92, we made it to the grand final in 93, the Eagles won in 94, then we won again in 95. So it was a great era of sport for the West Australians, but we, I was extremely proud to be a part of the team that brought the first trophy to Perth. This was the first championship in NBL history, with Ricky Grace being named finals MVP. The game changed forever after this championship and in turn started this dynasty. My path to the championship was just uh, discipline, training every day, and being focused. Um, I used to study the game quite a bit. I'm, I'm a real student of the game. Um, and I put the game down into three phases. Um, there's the skill aspect, uh, then there's the, the strength and conditioning aspect, and then there's the mental aspect. And I had a strategy on all three. I wanted to be the best skilled player, I wanted to be the best conditioned player, and I wanted to be the smartest player. And I had a plan for all three. The 1991 season had all the pressure on the Wildcats to win. They had one of, if not the best, young core in the league. You know, the league was tough. It was great. That, um, and, and you're happier when you achieve something and you go through struggles. So, uh, yes, there were a lot of struggles, but... I think one of the things that I learned through basketball was that, and I can compare it to life, is that there's a lot of struggles that you go through, but if you keep your eye and keep your game plan in life or in basketball, well then you can still be a winner. The Wildcats controversially replaced their coach Carl Bruton with Murray Arnold.
Cal uh, brought me out here, so I felt like Cal birthed me. Uh, and he won the championship the first year he was here, my first year. So when I went home to America, as I do at the end of every season, I was shocked to get back and hear that Cal wasn't the coach. Uh, you got to remember in 1990, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have social media. We didn't have any of that. So when I went home, I heard nothing else about the Wildcats for about a month. And I didn't ring back. I just knew my return date was X date a month from now. And I came back a month later and they said he wasn't the coach anymore. So that did affect me quite a bit because, you know, he was the person responsible for bringing me out here and I was pretty disappointed. But, you know, um, I quickly learned in, in professional sport, it's a business and you have to approach it as a business. So what I started doing or what I stopped doing was even learning players' names. So, because uh, I would get close to a player and we'd be friends and then all of a sudden they'd be gone. And uh, so that, that sort of emotional connection and then gone used to affect me, but I had to teach myself that this is a business and you have to let that go and it's a job and, it, and I had a job to do. The team also added Wildcats legend Andrew Vlahob, which helped them bring home a second championship. I really enjoyed being the first to do something. So we were the first to win the national, a national title in Western Australia. And we were the first club, I believe, to win back-to-back -back championships. So um, I felt like, for me, I wanted to really entrench myself into Australian basketball. And to be able to come in and win back-to-back -back championships was, um, was something that I was, I, was, I was very, very, very proud of. The next two seasons, the Wildcats continued with their core, trying to win a championship. However, they weren't getting the results. The legacy still influenced Perth basketball culture and the greater sports culture in Perth. Back then, there was only Channel 7, Channel 9, Channel 10, and ABC. So, there was only the Wildcats and the West Coast Eagles. So, people were watching a lot of Wildcat basketball. Andrew Vlahov became captain after Mike Ellis retired. The retirement shook the team to its core with him being the only original player left from the inception of the Wildcats. His spirit and the Ellis spirit was so deeply embedded into the Wildcats culture that something like that doesn't leave overnight. So even though Mike had retired, his spirit and, and the soul that he had brought and put in and instilled into all of us would uh, did remain. After this happened, the front office decided to hire Dr. Adrian Hurley and get the two-time NBL MVP Scott Fisher to join the team, as well as rookie Martin Kalinari. We didn't like Scott at first. I didn't like Scott, you know, because Scott played for North Melbourne Giants, and that's like the Lakers and the Celtics and Magic and Bird, and now all of a sudden Bird's coming to play with Magic, you know. Back in those days, you didn't change teams like they do now. You know, everybody sort of stayed at one team a lot. I mean, I played for the Wildcats for 16 years. So when Scott first got here, I, I, I was sort of apprehensive about it. But the first day at practice, he was the first guy there and the last guy to leave and outworked every single player on our team. And we thought we were a hardworking professional team. So what Scott did was he raised the level of intensity and professionalism in which how we went about our business because he was the ultimate professional. He uh, uh, brought the intensity every single day. And we were not about to let this guy come in here and outperform us. So Scott did, he, he was amazing for the Wildcats the way he raised everyone's standard of professionalism and intensity. This caused immediate success going to the NBA Finals against the Andrew Gaze led Bowen Tigers. This got to a decisive third game where this happened. An out of bounds possession. Will they go early and they've lost it? No, Vlahov got it back. Vlahov, will he be the man? He takes the three. No, in and out. I thought it was home. Goodness gracious me, folks. I thought it was home. It was did everything but go in the net. You're going to bring up my worst feeling I ever had. It was horrible, bro. It was horrible. Um, I fouled out that game. So I was sitting over there uh, very angry, very, very, very pissed off. Uh, it was game three, last, last game of game final, uh, grand final. 
and the Wildcats made this amazing comeback. And um, if Andrew would have hit that three, well then maybe things would have been different. So when that ball went in and peaked down through the net and then decided to come back out, that was that was probably one of the sinkest, deepest, disappointed feeling that I've ever had. The shot rolled out and they lost their game. Ricky Grace was named the finals MVP in his losing effort, averaging 22.3 points per game. This game is considered to be the greatest game in NBL history. It was weird, you know, we lost that grand final and then I was awarded most valuable player of the grand final. So I'm over here disappointed and sad and then I received this award that nobody's ever received before or since, you know, being the MVP of that grand final. So. And two weeks later, I was playing for the Atlanta Hawks. Um, so it was, um, it was a very disappointing time, but also a very exciting time as well. The Wildcats started with winning the preseason title. After that, they won the minor premiership and got a 19-7 record, the best in the NBL, making them the favorites to win the title. The culture was a winning culture. Um, very professional um, uh, winners. The Wildcats beat the 8th seed Melbourne Tigers in three games and sweep the Adelaide 36ers to make it to the fourth final in six years, this time against the North Melbourne Giants. There were a lot of tough teams in the league that I would struggle against. Um, there were a lot of tough games, tough matches, tough struggles. The Wildcats lost the first game by seven points. This caused them to respond by winning the second game by nine points and blowing the Giants out in the final game. Andrew Vlahov won the finals MVP averaging 24 points per game. The Wildcats continued with this call for the next four years, but they weren't successful due to four straight injury-prone seasons from the Stars. The Perth Wildcats decided to bounce back with adding Marcus Timmons and Paul Rogers, the latter being the first Wildcat to win MVP. Uh, it, no, no, nothing really changed because when, when, when we won the championship in 2000, I didn't think that was going to be the last championship that I won. The Perth Wildcats went on an incredible run to finish the season off and had an incredible end of the dynasty with a defeat of the Victorian Titans in a sweep to win their fourth NBL championship. The dynasty was never over, not when I retired. Uh, the Wildcats were always a championship threat um, uh, when I played. So um, I never really thought we were a dynasty anyway. I mean, it was just a, a um, we were a team of excellence, you know, and I think that excellence was there the whole time, the whole 16 years that I played. Every year that I played, we were a threat for the championship until the last buzzer sounded. And and then uh, people respected us as a potential championship threat. So I don't think that was ever gone in any 16 years that I played.